Imagine your life is a computer game. This game has eight levels. Your mission is to find treasure in each level, which will make your character healthier, stronger, and give them superpowers they will need in the next levels. The early levels are very short, but you get a lot of help from other more experienced players. As you progress and become more powerful, you will have to take on more challenges independently and eventually help others to succeed in the later levels. If you did not find treasure in one level, but your time has run out, you move on to the next level. Only now it is harder for you to achieve the objective in the new level. Now with this concept in mind, let's delve into Eric Erikson's psychosocial theory. The main idea behind Erikson's theory is that our personality develops in stages. At each stage, we face a psychosocial crisis, and the outcome of how we handle it affects our personality. As we discuss each stage, think about your own life and how you've navigated these stages to get where you are today. Stage 1 covers birth to about 18 months of age and it revolves around the trust versus mistrust crisis. This stage largely depends on caregivers. If caregivers consistently meet the baby's needs for nourishment, cleanliness, comfort and affection, the baby learns to trust, leading to a sense of safety and security. The virtue here is hope. Conversely, if parents are inconsistent or unreliable, the baby may proceed to the next stage with anxiety, fear, and mistrust. Stage 2 occurs between 18 months and 3 years old, focusing on autonomy versus shame and doubt. Children at this age begin to do things independently, like dressing themselves or choosing their snacks. Parents should provide choices, keeping them limited to two options, such as asking if they want to wear a red or yellow t-shirt. This exercise builds children's confidence in their abilities. Potty training is also significant here, fostering a sense of independence. Success should be celebrated and mistakes not shamed. The virtue developed is will. However, children who are not allowed to assert themselves within the set boundaries may leave this stage with feelings of inadequacy and self-doubt. Stage 3 spans ages 3 to 5, involving the initiative versus guilt. Children in this stage begin interacting with peers in preschool. Parents should facilitate playdates and join in as playmates, allowing the child to take on various roles like a teacher, doctor or restaurant owner. This encourages initiative and control. Children at this stage ask countless questions and parents should respond with genuine interest to foster a positive self-image. Successfully navigating this stage leads to the virtue of purpose. On the other hand, overly controlling or unsupportive parents may hinder the child's ability to take initiative, resulting in low self-esteem and guilt. Moving to stage 4, which encompasses ages 5 to 12, the challenge is industry versus inferiority. Children are fully engaged in school and often compare themselves to peers. Parents can help children find their strengths, whether in academics, sports, art or service, leading to a sense of competence. Feeling competent encourages industriousness and goal setting. However, if a child struggles in certain areas and faces repeated negative experiences at home, it can lead to feelings of inferiority. Stage 5 spans from 13 to 18 years old, where the struggle is between identity and role confusion. Adolescents begin questioning their identity and how they fit into society. They face peer pressure, social media influence, and physical changes. Stable homes with supportive, involved parents who neither force nor neglect their children can help them succeed in this stage. A strong identity 
leads to the virtue of fidelity. While a confused identity may result in ongoing struggles and an unclear future. Stage six spans from 18 to age 40. Focusing on intimacy versus isolation. Those with a strong sense of identity should be capable of building long-term, secure, loving relationships. This ties back to earlier stages where trust was developed. Individuals lacking a strong identity may struggle to establish committed relationships, leading to isolation, loneliness, and depression. Around age 40, stage 7 begins, lasting for 25 years. And the crisis to resolve is generativity versus stagnation. Generativity involves a desire to contribute to the well-being of younger generations, one's community and the species in general. This can manifest in family care, workplace success, community involvement and charitable contributions. Successfully navigating this stage leads to the virtue of care. However, those who struggle to receive positive feedback in these areas may feel disconnected and unmotivated. After age 65, we enter Eric Erickson's final stage, where the crisis is ego integrity versus despair. Individuals reflect on their lives, and those who are proud of their achievements experience genuine satisfaction. The virtue here is wisdom. Conversely, individuals who did not succeed in previous stages may feel regret and loss. Feelings of satisfaction and regret can fluctuate. People review their lives to find closure and face death without fear. In summary, each stage presents its own unique challenges and opportunities for personal growth and development.